all the religions of the world have an astronomical phenomenon. The birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus, for example, coincided with astronomical phenomena. The ancients noted beneficial changes coincided with certain astronomical changes. The most ancient chronicles of Alexandria attest the existence and universal prevalence of the belief in a savior, for example, for, all, for ages before the date of the of the pretended origin in the era of Augustus and Tiberius. To this day, say the writers of that ancient chronicle, Egypt has consecrated the pregnancy of a virgin and the nativity of her son, whom they annually present in a cradle to the adoration of the people. When, when uh, King Ptolemy, that is, 350 years before the Christian era, demanded of the priests the significancy of this religious ceremony, they told him it was mystery that had been taught to their forefathers by, res by a respectable prophet. In the name of the Egyptian idol Serapis, we have the radical Sor Abis, the son, the father, the fire ratified by the high evidence of Marcus Aurelius, that the bishops of Serapis were known and recognized under the title of bishops of Christ. We have found the selfsame story, even in the in its minuteness, constituting the basis of the legend of the Hindu god Krishna, which is about 1,700 years ago. He was born of a virgin. He shed his blood for the remission of sins, and he died on a cross. Also, this ancient story tells us, that is, the Ele Chronicles of Alexandria, that both the terms Jesus and Christ were in common usage thousands of years ago, before Christianity. This is attested by the great astronomer Albozar. Following the most ancient traditions of the Persians, the Chaldeans, the Egyptians, of Hermes and of Escalapius, they recognized a child born of a virgin in the month of August. That child, says Albozar, which some nations call Jesus, but which in Greek is called Christus. This child is born in August. I bring this out to show that all religions of the world have a savior, and all these saviors apparently originated as a sun god, thus the birth of the god Mithras, Persian Christ, from the days of an infinitely remote antiquity, was represented to have taken place in a stable and was celebrated throughout the whole pagan world, on none other than the 24th of December midnight, the most celebrated of all the Magian festivals, where if you rectify your celestial globe to the moment at, of 12 o'clock at midnight between the 24th and 25th of December, you will find the constellation of the stable of Bethlehem, in which Christ is said to be born, the moment he achieves his first degree of ascension at the lower meridian while you shall see the constellation of the Virgin who is said to bring him forth. At that moment, come to the line of the horizon, and thus said to preside over his nativity. Christ and Mithra are identical in symbology and in according to philology. Christ was born on the same day when the sun takes his annual birth in the stable of Augeas, that is, in the station of the celestial goat or Capricorn where we have seen is actually placed the stable of Augeas in the sixth labor of Hercules. December the 24th, the sun begins to move northward, and the sun is said to shed its rays on the northern latitudes, melting the ice and the snow, and all the seeds frozen in the ground are gradually resurrected, and the desert rejoices and blossoms as the rose. So it was said by the ancients that the sun was the savior, that it crossed over on the 21st, for example, of March, and became the ingress of Aries. It was called the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, because the sun enters into the sign of the Ram or the Lamb. And it redeems the earth from darkness and gloom, of course, and the actinic rays of the sun warms the earth. This is symbolic of the fact that God indwells man, and as man becomes aware of the fact that the kingdom of God is within him, kingdom of intelligence, wisdom, and power, that all the glory and the power of God are within him. 
as he begins to realize that here is a power, a mystic power, that can lift him up, heal, inspire him, bless him, guide him and direct him. Then the light of God begins to move north in his mind, because north is a place of darkness, indicating that the wisdom of God anoints his intellect, becomes a lamp unto his feet and a light on his path. Now exactly at midnight on the 24th of December, Virgo rises on the eastern horizon, so it was said that the sun, S-U-N, was born of a virgin. The sun, exactly on the 24th of December, begins to move northwards, as I said, and then the sign Virgo rises in the eastern horizon. So it was said that the sun was born of a virgin. And there was no room at the end. And that uh, the, the manger was the place where he was born. Well, now, all the animals of the zodiac, of course, are there. And uh, the uh, child is the son that is born at that moment. But this is symbolic also. It means that the child is discovered in you. And the child is simply the spiritual idea, the awareness of the power of God in you. When you become aware that God indwells you, then the child or spiritual idea or awareness is born in you. All the animals of the zodiac, of course, are within all of us. Because the zodiac means the holy belt of animals. And all the moods and tones and vibrations are within you, and all drives and urges are within you, because infinity is within you. So every midnight on December the 24th and the Eastern Horizon, you can see that sign Virgo. When you discover that God walks and talks in you, that your own consciousness or awareness is God, when you discover that your own I amness is the Savior of the world, when you discover that when you say I am, you are discovering the presence of God in you. Furthermore, you're announcing the only presence and the only power. When you realize that whatever you attach to the I am within you, you become, such as I'm whole, I'm perfect, I'm illumined, I'm inspired. When you discover that, then your unrealized hopes and dreams, which are the seeds frozen in the ground, waiting for you to warm them and stimulate them to birth. When you discover this power, you will claim that you now are what you long to be, you will claim that you are guided and inspired. You will feel that you are the being you long to be. You will dwell upon it, consciously, knowingly, and feelingly. And as you do, without the aid of any man, you will resurrect these qualities and powers within you. For example, if you say, God is guiding me now, there is right action in my life. Our infinite intelligence reveals to me the answer, the answer to any problem. And I recognize the lead when it comes. The idea will come spontaneously into your conscious mind, and you will recognize it. And that idea will be born without the aid of any man. Because infinity is within you, and this I amness within you is the Virgin. It's the Virgin Mary. Mary means the sea, and Virgin means pure. It means the pure stream of consciousness. It means your own unconditioned consciousness, which is capable of infinite conceptions of itself. Therefore, I am as the presence of God within you, as Exodus tells you. It is the only cause, presence, and powers, the only substance, and all things come forth from it. Therefore, the whole universe is the virgin birth. And every time you claim yourself to be, to do, or to have something in this world, and as you feel inspired or guided, as you claim the healing presence of God is flowing through you, then a healing will come, and that will take place without the aid of any man. So when you define yourself, as being the being you long to be, and as you assume the reality of it, and as you walk the earth in the light that it is so, then the moment that you think not, the answer will come, healing on its wings. You can open your mind and your heart now and receive impressions in the depths of yourself. And whatever you convey to your subconscious mind is impressed upon that deeper mind. And whatever is impressed is expressed on the screen of space. This is the marvelous drama that's taking place within you. At best, the story of outward Christianity is a sorry tale indeed, with its recital of the cruelty of the Dark Ages, the rabid, emotionally motivated crusades for the recapture of a geographical holy land. Thousands of children join these pilgrimages to wind up on the slave markets of Egypt. Then followed a commercialization of holy relics, the wood from the cross of Jesus, the veil of Veronica, as some bishops waxing rich from a lumber yard proceeds in the effort to keep up the supply of splinters from the so-called cross. 
All this points to the tendency of mere natural man's blind passion to material pilgrimages, to geographical centers prominent in history and fable. It takes a truly spiritual renaissance, a reawakening and a rebirth to discover that the birth of Jesus is something far more wonderful and something more than a historical event and is not to be found in a geographical Bethlehem. Man must discover the holy birth process within himself. It is history plus an individualized application to man himself where he gives birth to the God presence within himself, where he gives birth to light, love, truth, and beauty, where he dies to ignorance, fear, and superstition, and he awakens to the love of God within himself. All men must eventually come to Bethlehem, the city of David, the beloved of God, and God's beloved, which is simply your mind in tune with the infinite, where you dedicate and consecrate yourself to the indwelling God, the only cause, the only presence, and the only power. When you discover this, the child is born in you. It's the birth of the Christ child because Christ or Krishna means the light of God. It means the presence of God. And as I told you, the story of Krishna 1,700 years ago is exactly the same as the story we have in the book of Luke. He too was born at midnight on the 24th of December of a virgin. He too shed his blood for the remission of sins. He fed 5,000. He did all these things. And he was a mythical God. Therefore, this story and all other stories like it are to remind you, psychologically and spiritually speaking, of the mystic power that is within you that can heal and restore your soul. Now, Joseph in the Bible means your conscious reasoning mind. It means that mind of yours which reasons, analyzes, weighs, dissects, investigates, scrutinizes, and chooses. It has its superficial beliefs and feelings and all these things. Now, Mary is a word lost in the night of time. Mary is the mother of Buddha, and supposed to be the mother of Jesus, and so forth. Maya, Astarta, Mary, all these names mean the great sea. And Mary means the subjective mind, the subconscious mind, which is pregnant with holy possibilities. Your subconscious mind is coextensive with all wisdom. It's the seat of emotion and intuition, seat of clairvoyance and clairaudience. Infinite intelligence and boundless wisdom are locked in your own subconscious depth. The subconscious mind is the answer to any problem under the sun. If you're wondering about an answer to any problem tonight, I don't care what it is. As you go to sleep tonight, Say to yourself, infinite intelligence within my subconscious mind knows the answer. It reveals the answer to me now, and I accept it. The nature of infinite intelligence is responsiveness. It responds, repays, rebounds, and satisfies. Its nature is to respond to your request. And then when perhaps when you awaken in the morning, the answer will come, or it may come in a dream and a vision of the night. It may come as an idea in the morning. It may come as a feeling, an awareness, an inner silent knowing of the soul, but the answer will come. We're told there was no room at the inn. The inn means the outer meeting place of superficial human beliefs and fears and customs and traditions. When you tell man, the average man, that God indwells him, that creative intelligence is within him, that power that moves the world, that that power is within him, and that infinite intelligence made him from a cell, that it created his body, that his body is the handiwork of this God presence. And when you tell him, here is an infinite intelligence which can heal you, which can restore you, which can answer your problem, which can wipe away tears, which can inspire and guide you, solve your problem, give you wealth. It can do all these things. What does he do? The average man laughs at you. And he says, God within me, no. He thinks God is up in the sky somewhere, an old man with whiskers, an anthropomorphic being. God, man has created a God in his own image and likeness. He has created a monster up in the sky somewhere, based upon his ignorance, his fear, and his superstition. He doesn't know that infinite mind and infinite intelligence within him represent the God presence, that God is the highest and the best in him, that there is as much God in him as there is love or peace or understanding. So there is no room at the end when you tell man, that his own I amness is the Lord, God Almighty. And that whatever he attaches to I am, he becomes. If he says, I'm poor, I'm sick, I'm no good, I'm inferior. All these things happen to him. 
he can reverse it and say, I'm illumined, I'm inspired, I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm rich, I'm a godlike man. And all these things will come to pass too. Uh, we're told he was born in the stable. The stable, of course, means your subconscious mind. The place where the anima, where the basic urges, the feelings, the animations are. Where the animals are. Anima, animals in the Bible means animated states of consciousness. Your feelings, your moods, your tones, your vibrations. And all these moods and feelings and urges are there waiting for the coming of the shepherd, the Lord and the Master. Your shepherd is your conviction that God is, and your awareness of God's love, and therefore your shepherd, your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions. We're told he's born at Bethlehem, a spot not in history and geography, but in yourself, where you become conscious of God within you. Bethlehem means the house of bread in Hebrew. It means where you feed on the presence of God within yourself, where you eat all the bread of peace, of love, of harmony, of joy, where you meditate on the eternal verities, on the truths of God, where you meditate on the fact that God loves me and cares for me, that he leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. This is real bread. It's bread that gives you peace and solace and comfort. It's bread that inspires you. Surely the house of bread is within you. It's not over in Jerusalem or in Bethlehem. That's nonsense. You must be fed by the inner light within you. You must cease to be fed by your five senses, by your family, by tradition, what grandmother taught, and what your great-grandfather believed. Uh, perhaps everything they believed was a lie. Why don't you be fed by spiritual manna, the, by the wisdom and the truths of God within yourself, by the great eternal truths of the Bible, lost in the night of time? You must place your faith in the goodness of God, in the guidance of God, in the love of God, in the harmony of God. Realize God loves you and cares for you, that he watches over you, that he sustains and strengthens you. And as you believe these things, all these things will come to pass. No one can explain the how, why, and when of spiritual causation. And when your problem or prayer will be answered, your business is to gain confidence in the Lord God within yourself and give power to none others. Your Savior represents the solution to your problems. And your own awareness, the God presence within you, is your Savior. Your knowledge of the laws of life and the way of the Spirit is your Savior. When you know that whatever you impress upon your subconscious mind is expressed, then your Savior is being born. When you know that your subconscious mind is an answer to any problem under the sun, and then you are ready to bring about a solution to your problem because the words salvation and solution are synonymous. The nativity of Christ, Christ means the presence of God in you. It's the same word as Krishna and Mithra, Adonis. It has the same meaning as Herod and Vishnu and all these ancient terms. From the standpoint of astronomy and philology, all these words in their radicals have a common root. Zoroaster is the same word, for example, as Christ. Buddha is another word meaning Christ and Krishna, and all these names, they have a common origin. They all mean the sun, and the sun symbolically means the presence of the eternal light in you, means the presence of God in you. The nativity of Christ is taking place in your manger, in your subconscious mind, when at sleep time you find yourself with feelings of confidence, faith, rest, and assurance that all is being attended to in God's good time. When you go to sleep knowing that God has the answer, when you realize, that infinite intelligence responds to you when you go to sleep knowing God answers me now and I accept it. By feeling the reality of your affirmation, by claiming that what you say is true, then as you awaken in the morning, you will re read the in signs of incarnation within you because the answer will come to you, the healing, the solution to your problem. As you awaken in the morning, you will have a feeling that God is answering you now, that the way is opened up. It will be an inner silent knowing of the soul. It will be the sign, the conviction that it is so. The Christmas story in the Bible, the Santa Claus story of the ancient, they have points of psychological similarity and significance. Both point to the inner abiding reality in you and all of us. Children should never be disillusioned regarding the reality of a Santa Claus, which one day will be translated 
into the God self within, awaiting recognition in life and life's purpose. Jesus is a spiritual being, not to be sought in flesh. We must explain Jesus up into another dimension of consciousness. We are all taxed to bring out the higher self, out of Mary, out of your subconscious mind, and Joseph, your conscious mind. The word Jesus is lost in the night of time. It originates with the word IES, or yes, meaning the Son, or God. So the word Jesus Christ, according to ancient mystics, long before Christianity was ever heard of, means yes, or YES, meaning the Son, is Christ, and Christ means the fire, means Jesus Christ is the presence of God in you. That is the meaning of it. The top secret is within you. The terms of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, these terms antedate Christianity and Judaism also. As I explained at the opening of this lecture, the Holy Mother and the child and the husband these were demonstrated thousands of years ago in Egypt, Chaldea, Babylonia, Hindu, representing the father, the mother, and the child, the eternal trinity, consciousness, idea, and conviction, hydrogen, oxygen, electric spark, and you have water, electron, a proton, we have the universe. The union of two things bring forth a third. The union of your conscious and subconscious mind, synchronously united, harmoniously joined together, working in concert, in unison, and in love, bring forth health, happiness, and peace, and all the blessings of life. The harmonious union of your conscious and subconscious mind will bring illumination, inspiration, joy, and happiness into your life. The inharmonious relationship of your conscious and subconscious mind represent the cause of all misery, suffering, and insanity, and chaos in this world. Now, when you realize that God indwells you and that your conscious and subconscious mind are projections of this God presence, and your conscious mind represents the husband and your subconscious rep represents the wife, when these two unite, you have children too, don't you? The conscious mind impregnates the subconscious, and from that comes forth children, meaning books, means plays, inventions, discoveries, also manifestations in your body, your mind, and circumstances. Therefore, when these two function harmoniously, it is said that Jesus Christ is an action in you. Jesus meaning your illumined reason, and Christ meaning your subconscious mind or the wisdom of the deeper mind. Now this mystic power in you can lift you up out of a sick bed, make you whole and perfect. It is a marvelous power. It has a magical healing balm for the bruised heart. It can free you from prison, from fear, and liberate you. This God presence can inspire you with new thoughts and ideas. It can reveal to you answers to all your problems. It can reveal to you your true place in life. It can do all these things and much more. This presence will respond to your request and bring friends into your life and furnish you with prosperity that spells freedom to be, to do, and to have. This power has been known in all ages. It is the primal power of being. It was known to the ancient Hindus six and seven thousand years ago. It was known to the ancient Chinese who wrote the I Ching, called the Book of Changes or the Great Book of Wisdom. Much of the I Ching you will find in our own Bible, for example and much of the New Testament as well as the Old is taken from the Puranas of uh, India, written six and seven thousand years ago. The shepherds that watch the Holy Child represent your attitudes of mind, which keep a watch over the sheep, and sheep are the lovely ideas, the marvelous things you wish to bring into your experience. But you must watch over your thoughts and feelings and reactions, over your ideals and goals, you must give your attention and devotion to them, else the wolves will come, and the wolves are fear, doubt, hate, resentment. These destroy love, harmony, peace, and joy. Therefore, you are the shepherd yourself, watching over these ideals and these great truths. 
Now you can contact this power by first recognizing that it is there, and then you can say to yourself, this God power is now flowing through me, guiding, directing me, sustaining and strengthening. This God presence flows through me as harmony, as health, as peace, as joy, as strength, as vitality, as wholeness, as beauty, as right action, as abundance. As you continue to do this, your body will manifest a greater strength, and your whole world will change and magically melt in the image and the likeness of the dominant conviction within you. This power will enable you to soar up on wings like an eagle to the realm of dominion and joy. Why? Because you're discovered the child within yourself, the holy babe, and it's called a child when you first recognize it, because it's just an idea to you. You haven't, you haven't used it as yet. But as you continue to use this mystic power, you become acquainted with it. It begins to take charge of your entire life and your business and your home and your relationship with others. It grows into a deep conviction within you. The government is on his shoulders, on the shoulders of wisdom, truth, and beauty. You're told over and over again in the Bible that the kingdom of God is within you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, the kingdom of intelligence and wisdom and power are within you, because the presence of God is within your own subconscious depths. This indwelling power, this inner light, this spiritual idea is spoken of in the Bible as a child. This is really the top secret of the mind within you. This is the secret hidden from all generations. This really is the lost word that people have been looking for for thousands of years. And what do you think the lost word is? It's I am. And the third chapter of Exodus. That's the word that leads you out of trouble. That's the word that guides you and directs you. That's the word that restores your soul. Because when you say I am, you are announcing the very presence of God within you, the only cause, the only redeemer. And therefore, whatever you affix to the I am, you become. So you can say, I'm wealthy, I'm happy, I'm joyous, I'm free, I'm illumined, I'm inspired. Believe it. Repeat these things frequently to yourself until they become a habit. And by osmosis, they'll sink down into your subconscious mind and become a conviction. Whatever is impressed in your deeper mind is expressed on the screen of space. The conscious awareness of this almighty power within you and your determination to make use of it is the birth of the child. It's also the birth of the lost word. It's no longer lost because you are now using it. But it's lost to millions of people. Every day of their life, they're using this word. They say, I'm poor, I'm no good, I'm inferior, I'm broke, and I'm blind, and I'm deaf, and I'm dumb, and I'm weak, and I'm anemic. And all these things come to pass in their life. But that's not the way to use it, is it? Because God isn't weak or anemic or sick or blind or deaf or dumb. Whatever is true of God is true of you. Therefore, you must never affirm anything that is not true of God. Nourish this idea that God indwells you. Realize that this God power can do all sorts of wonderful things for you. And as you contemplate and meditate on the fact that God in the midst of you is healing you now, you will find a release of the healing presence, making you whole and perfect. Begin every morning of your life and affirm boldly, God is guiding me now. And I predicate my success on the fact that the wisdom of the Almighty reveals to me everything I need to know, and I am prosper beyond my fondest dreams. As you do this, wonders will happen in your life. You will find your whole life under the care of this God wisdom. This child is born of a virgin and in a stable. Now, we touched on that from an astronomical standpoint, but it's also true psychologically. The ancients used the celestial drama of the heavens to portray the changes which take place in the mind of man as he awakens from darkness to light. The virgin in the Bible is not a woman. It means a pure mind, 
It means a mind dedicated and consecrated to God. It also means, of course, your subconscious mind when it's purified. When you look to God alone and give all your allegiance and devotion to the living Spirit Almighty within you, for God is spirit, they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. All right, if God is spirit, then God has no face, form, or figure. God is the living spirit within you. And that is the spirit of love and peace and beauty, which you have never seen. But when you look into your child's eye, you have the feeling of love. That's the presence of God, isn't it? You have a mind, and you think that infinite mind and that infinite love within you, all these are of God. The invisible part of you is God. God is the highest and the best in you. Therefore, when you realize this God presence indwells you, when you begin to contact it, then uh, you are the virgin yourself because you're cleansing your mind of all sorts of false beliefs because the lower is subject to the higher. And when you fill your mind with the eternal truths of God, you crowd out of your mind everything unlike God. Then the virgin mind is being born, isn't it? Put God first in your life and give all honor, power, and glory to him. Then the Christ child is born in the stable. The stable is your subconscious mind where all moves, tones, feelings, urges, and drives dwell. Locked within you is the presence and power of God. All the attributes, qualities, and powers of God are latent within you, waiting resurrection. Isaiah said, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the death, upon them hath the light shine. Well, death in the Bible is the shadow land. It means the man is dead to peace, to love, to joy, to beauty, to harmony. That's death in the Bible. The resurrection is the resurrection of love, of peace, of wisdom, understanding, of goodwill, and of joy. Then you're resurrecting the God presence within you. This is why Paul said, I die daily. I die to false beliefs and error and superstition and ignorance, and I resurrect the wisdom of God within me. Man is considered dead, therefore, when he's dead to faith, hope, and love. When he's unaware of this God presence within him, he said to be dead. This very moment, resurrect joy and faith and love, because God is a giver and a gift. God has given everything to you. God has given him, given you himself. He's given you a mind and spirit. He's given you all his qualities and attributes. You are here to accept the gift which has been given. Actually, the great Christmas tree of antiquity is within you. And Christmas was celebrated for thousands of years before Christianity or Judaism. It was celebrated in all the northern latitudes, based upon the birth of the sun, the light of God moving northward redeeming the world from darkness. Symbolically, it means when the light of God wells up in you, anoints your intellect and reveals to you the perfect plan and shows you the way you should go. When it becomes a light on your path and a lamp unto your feet, then the light is moving north, isn't there? For in the ancient temple mystery schools, the north was a place of darkness, you see. And man was said to be living in the shadow of death when he didn't know that the light of God was within him. The government is to be upon his shoulder. This means let God guide, direct, and govern your life. For example, every day of your life affirm this. Divine law and order govern my life. Divine right action controls me. Divine love fills my soul. Divine success is mine. Divine peace and harmony reign supreme. These truths will sink down into your subconscious and come to pass. The government of your life will then be of God. Let the all-wise one, the all-knowing one, the all-resourceful one, the all-powerful one, the self-renewing one, guide, heal, and restore your soul. Turn your requests over to this God wisdom. Cast your burden on the God self within and go free. Claim that the marvelous healing power is now transforming your whole life and miracles will happen in your life. We're told God is the great counselor. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. God is the Great Counselor. If you are worried, perplexed, confused, for example, if you do not know whether or not to take some important step, to accept a proposal, to sign a contract, get advice, from this God presence within you. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Say to yourself, God knows the answer. God reveals to me the solution. I accept it and I recognize the idea when it comes into my mind. It's impossible for me to mistake it. I recognize it. I know it. And I see it clearly. Then the answer will come to you and you will recognize it. You'll have that inner silent knowing of the soul, an intuitive healing, a predominant hunch. Follow it. That's the answer. Are you wondering whether to accept a new position or dissolve partnership or take a trip to Europe or trust some individual? Then, if that's the case, let God, the great counselor, give you the answer and say, God knows the answer. God reveals to me the answer. The answer will come. Remember now, follow the lead which comes. An idea will well up in your mind. Just like toast pops out of a toaster, the answer will come to you. God is peace, and the God presence will teach you new things utterly beyond the compass of your present understanding, enabling you to do the so-called impossible. Furthermore, as you call upon this God of peace within you, his river of peace will flow through you, and you will discover that the Prince of Peace is born within you. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, be not afraid, trust in God and do good, thus shall you walk in the land, verily you shall be fed. The God presence within you walks and talks in you this very moment. The government of life will be a government of divine ideas mothered by divine love, as you turn to the God presence within, claiming God is guiding you now, and his love fills your soul. Claim regularly divine law and order reign supreme in my life. Claim divine love fills my soul. Claim divine success is mine now. Divine right action is mine. Divine intuition reveals to me everything I need to know to solve all problems. Divine wisdom governs all my plans and purposes. Having established this divine government over your mind, body, and affairs, know that you're guided, protected, and prospered beyond your fondest dreams. This new government which you've installed to this day solve all problems, wipes away all tears, and sets you on the high road to happiness, freedom, and peace of mind. Throw away the old calendar. God is the eternal now and the birth of God has taken place in you, now and forevermore.